Hello Internet, Ben here with another little update for uh, whatever this game is. Um, you can see that I have added different textures for the ground. You can also see that they repeat rather obviously at times. Um, I just really wanted to you know, implement the capability to, to have random uh, textures on the ground. And I'll, I'll definitely want to add more details like little cobwebs and corners and all that kind of fun stuff. But there's also, importantly, vases which totally block your movement. Um, and this is very important because it makes sure to always block your exit out of the first room with vases. So you must learn to shoot. Then you can proceed. Oh, that was two vases on top of each other. That's not supposed to happen. Sometimes the vases contain coins. Um, what coins will do, I have no clue, but you can certainly pick them up. Um, I'm also going to need some UI element to tell you how many coins you've got. And they come in different colors. There's like copper, silver, gold, blue, and purple, because... What, you know, I don't know. Whoa, and there's a snake. So perfect. So there are excellent. So let me shoot these snakes. Now you may notice. Oh, I should have demonstrated more. You may have noticed that they move in a, a particular way. Like the green ones were trying to follow me vertically up and down. Let me just restart the game and, uh, and I'll show you. Here's um. Well, don't worry about it. Let's uh, see if I can position this right. Good enough. All right. Bust through there. So here we go. We can already see the snake. So. The, ah, gosh, get out of my way. So the brown ones, for example, they will try to move left and right first in order to get to me before they try to go up and down. Um, and this is intentional. And the green ones are, are the reverse. They prefer to move uh, up and down before they move horizontally, right? So like these guys are stuck on the wall, and that's absolutely a thing to take advantage of. Um, the reason I have done this is I want to... I think what needs to happen is that... I should only introduce one color of snake in the beginning. So either the browns or the greens. I don't know which one. Maybe it can even be random. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I don't know. Whatever. We can figure out those details later. But I want the player to learn, oh, I can exploit their movement, right? Like, you should learn that. I can exploit how they move to not get hurt and just shoot them down. Awesome. And then the twist for... So if you remember, I was talking about the... Um, the, I can't remember the name of the developer again, but who's been working on the recent Mario games. He has that four-panel comic-inspired um, game design philosophy. You introduce the concept, develop it, uh, twist, and then have a resolution. So the twist here, in the, in the case of the snakes, the snakes are going to be this mechanic. First introduce them, they're moving, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the twist will be either you can't attack anymore, so use your... Um, you know, use what you've learned about exploiting their movement to just avoid them entirely. Um, that's one possible twist. Another twist could be adding the other type of snake. So now it's like, oh, you thought you knew how to avoid snakes. Now there's this other kind of snake messing with you, you know. I'll, I, I'm i leaning toward steal your ability to shoot because that seems a little cleverer, I guess, to me. Um, but I'll have to see if it just feels mean. Um, stripping the player of their powers is kind of a, a mean way to change things up, so we'll see. Uh, the development, though, and... Oh, he's not in this room. I was waiting going through that room because I thought he might be there. I think he's in the next room. Yeah, the way we're going to develop this, and, I mean, honestly, you could call either one a twist or a development, I think, but this guy who is standing in a place and animating but not doing anything else, he's going to be the snake thrower. I don't remember if I mentioned him last uh, video, episode, whatever you want to say. Um, so, obviously, he's not working properly. I had only implemented his... Um, ooh, just keep on throwing snakes there. It's random, so it's possible. He could conceivably throw an infinite number of snakes and never walk, Like, but, you know, the chances are so low. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so he is going to throw snakes. When he runs, he's going to run away from the players while facing them. Um, I don't know what to do with that for multiplayer. Like, for the snakes themselves, they just pick one of the players and are like, I'm hunting that guy down until he's dead or something, or I haven't moved in a while. If the snake is like, I've been unable to move, I'll pick a new target. Um, that's another possibility, but mainly they'll give up if their, their target has died um, and switch targets. This guy, I don't know if I'll have him pick one player and try to move away from him or her, or if I'll um, have him take like the average of all the players' positions and move away from that point, something, you know, whatever. The point is he doesn't want to be near you, he wants to throw snakes, and so every time he's doing that little arm throw, I'm going to have either a snake graphic or maybe a little egg that breaks open yielding a snake because that would be kind of funny I don't know I'm also not sure why he's taller I mean I drew him that way but I'm not sure story wise like I'm just gonna go with it um, for drawing him it worked better to have a few more pixels and I was like well that's gonna make him taller that's kind of weird right I don't know if that means you're a short wizard or he's a tall dude it, the, the game will not explain it's up to you to decide um, 
And that's it. And then uh, we will have in this next room, or perhaps the room after, would be the twist where now there's a new kind of snake where you're stripped of your powers. And then finally we would have the uh, stairs. If that seemed like maybe not enough rooms to you, that's e quite flexible. Um, I can specifically control, and I'm going to do this for all the levels. They're procedurally generated. I mean, it's, you know, if we start up a new game, it's going to be a new uh, random layout. Um, although this looks awfully similar. I promise it's random. Um, yeah, see, there's a different room. Uh, so you get different random rooms, but I can control the um, uh, how many rooms there should be and kind of some variables of the room, like uh, you know what what kind of size am I looking for, um, uh, what kind of exits, things like that, um, and then uh, and then and then I will specifically place within the rooms whatever obstacles I want. So I'd say you know in room two introduce the snakes, in room three let's have a break, in room four introduce the guy who throws snakes now, right? Room five maybe another break, room six the twist, room seven you're out. It's the conclusion. I might have a few straggle, straggler snakes in here or something just to you know, have snakes again because that was the theme of the level and that's your conclusion, right, according to the four panel design. So, and there will be side passages as well, I just have not gotten to code those, but um, I have the structure in place within the code um, for allowing me to determine where can I put side passage, and I'll just randomly attach them anywhere, I'm, I'm not too worried about whether they're attached to a um, one of the, let's say, panel rooms, right, either the develop you know, whatever twist. If it's off one of those rooms or one of the breaks in between rooms, I, I'm indifferent. Um, I, you know, I'll play with it and maybe I'll find out that I'm not indifferent. It's really got to be one or the other, but I, for now I'll just let them branch off whatever. Um, and then we'll put like treasures, um, possibly other mechanics. I think for the first level I wouldn't want to do that, but I think it would be interesting if there were like previews of mechanics. Uh, like one I have coded, although I need to test is icy grounds where when you once you walk and hit it you just keep on slipping till you get to the other side and I'll probably allow a small degree of control that you can exert on your player while you're sliding but you know your, your destination is going to be pretty set the moment you hit that ice um, and it would be interesting to introduce those mechanics in the little side rooms um, or just use old mechanics and so you know we could have the room with a snake thrower in the otherwise fire stick level or something because he's off on a side room with treasure or maybe in, in this first level where there's snakes, maybe we throw in fire sticks on a side room. Um, but I don't know if I want to do that in the first level. I think the first level maybe should be kinder and we wouldn't throw any additional mechanics at the player, you know. Um, so we'll see. Or maybe there's other, um, maybe the side rooms can have teaching moments for other mechanics that I, I haven't thought of. Um, similar to in the first room, I don't know if you noticed, did I already mention? I don't remember. But there's those vases that block the... Um, there's always bases that block the opening, although that's too bad. They're supposed to always block the opening, so you have to shoot the um, bases to realize I, you know, I can shoot to play. So potentially the side rooms in the first level could teach other mechanics as well. Um, I don't know what those mechanics would be because I haven't coded them, but you can imagine maybe I make like a short teleport that the wizard always gets, and you have to use it to get over a wall or whatever. Who knows? Um, we'll we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that's what I've got so far. Um, I think this is about as much as I'm going to get today because I'm about to hang out with some friends. Uh, but I will, of course, post more as I have more to show. And, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.